Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar from ShareFile, all about security and compliance and all things GDPR. And uh, let's go through the agenda first. So um, I'll uh, do a little bit about uh, GDPR and compliance and what it means and basically uh, the reasons why we do a lot of things we do and why at ShareFile we are so focused on security and compliance. And then Matt and Emmett will uh, get down deeper into the features. And so let's talk GDPR. Uh, it's one of my favorite subjects. Um, and indeed, uh, a lot of questions that I get uh, every day uh, are compliance or GDPR related. Now, this is not by accident. GDPR uh, was made a huge impact, uh, especially in the last few years, not just in Europe, uh, as most people know by now, GDPR is, isn't is just for European companies, right? It it protects European citizens, but as we all know, the world has become uh, a much smaller place since the internet uh, was introduced, and therefore any company in the world that deals with uh, uh, any European citizen as a customer uh, is bound by uh, GDPR regulations. So uh, that word in itself is important. It's not a law. It's not a directive. Uh, it's a, a set of regulation regulations, but it is enforceable by law. Uh, now, it's been in effect since 2018, uh, but in the first few years, it wasn't really enforced all that hard yet. Now, we have seen um, uh, an, a, a huge increase uh, in the enforcement of GDPR, uh, especially since I would say last year or two. So the first couple of years, the the fines, which which can go up pretty high uh, when you consider uh, a company can get fined four percent of their annual turnover. So that's that's not uh, cutting into profits. No, it's it's actual turnover. So. Uh, to give you an example of the largest fine uh, last year uh, was for a company called Meta, uh, which was over a billion euros. Uh, that's billion with a B. Now, uh, the total amount of fines, even if you factor out uh, that fine for Meta, uh, is also, uh, uh, it's, it's quite substantial. It's, it's uh, I believe, over last year alone was uh, over 2.4 billion. So, um, a large increase in the enforcement of GDPR, which means a lot of customers, uh, uh, larger and smaller customers, are asking questions about the, about this, and rightfully so. Now, um, the entire thing, GDPR, uh, it's a lot of articles, and uh, while I'm not a lawyer, um, I am here to tell you about the ways that ShareFile can uh, help you become GD more GDPR compliant. Now, uh, in order to be compliant, you need um, to have, uh, for example, a data protection officer, and you need to uh, focus a lot on protecting the data itself, uh, not just protecting it, but also uh, uh, having the visibility into what happens with your data. Uh, now, that in itself can be very challenging, to say the least. Um, a couple of things that um, when you read through the GDPR regulation uh, is uh, are important. There's the concept of controllers and processors. Uh, now, as ShareFile is uh, essentially both a controller and a processor, but um, the really the controllers uh, is uh, are the people that decide what needs to happen with data and processors are um, companies or entities that uh, that actually process the data. Uh, by the way, a data protection officer uh, doesn't necessarily have to be uh, hired uh, uh, in-house, so to say, in an organization. This can be outsourced, and that's what a lot of uh, customers, especially smaller customers, tend to do. Right. So let's get into how ShareFile can help you become more GDPR compliant. Now, there's uh, I've picked out a few articles from the GDPR regulations, 
uh, that uh, basically stick out when it, when it comes to uh, us trying to help you as a customer. Um, now, uh, one very important thing uh, is in Article 25, which is all about protecting the data by design and by default. Uh, protection of data is hugely important, um, especially when it comes to personally identifiable information. Um, so identifying what PII actually is and where it resides within your files and within your documents uh, is something that may not be easy in itself. So uh, there's two ways that Sheriff Hall can help you with that. Um, we've decided to not reinvent the wheel, so to say. There are uh, various uh, DLP systems available, especially for on-premises stored data. And we decided to integrate with that. Um, so DLP systems uh, that use, with a technical term, an ICAP protocol uh, to scan documents and identify uh, possibly problematic data or data that shouldn't be shared externally, for example, uh, so things like credit cards information or passport numbers, things like that, um, that can be integrated into ShareFile. So when that integration happens within ShareFile, you can say, okay, uh, documents that contain this information sh cannot be shared externally, and then you won't be able to share that in, uh, uh, externally using ShareFile. Uh, what we're also working on uh, is actually to uh, automatically warn people uh, uh, within the organization that share a document externally, uh, even when it's not stored on premises, even when you don't already have a DLP system, a data leakage pr protection system, um, we're actually um, building the functionality right into ShareFile. Um, uh, at least that's what we're working on. So that's something that uh, you might see a bit later on in the year. Um, but for now, uh, as any DLP system uh, you, that uses ICAP can be integrated into ShareFile. Uh, and then we further protect uh, that data using uh, two-step verification, SAML integration, uh, some uh, mobile device security policies uh, that, that's already uh, implemented right in ShareFile as, as the, uh, in the core product itself. Now, visibility, hugely important uh, when it comes to uh, uh, protecting your data, but, but also be, being GDPR compliant uh, or uh, striving to be means that uh, at any point in time, uh, a company, uh, an organization should be able to uh, hand over information that says which people in, in the organization had access to which documents and which folders at which point in time. Um, so this is something very uh, uh, basic in ShareFile. As, as a matter of fact, we've had uh, reports that show this uh, and we make it easy to create those reports uh, uh, through, from uh, from the beginning, beginning of ShareFile, actually. And um, when GDPR was introduced, we actually fine-tuned and created some additional reporting possibilities uh, that sh shows you exactly that. Who had access, what changes in access were there at which, which point in time. So it, it makes it incredibly easy for you to uh, be able to uh, give out that information as to who had access and, and what changed in access. So auditing reports, tracking all that behavior, who shared which files with whom, all that is really easy with our reporting. Um, the security of the processing itself, um, of course, we use bank level encryption when it comes to encrypt, encrypting the files um, and data at rest and in transit, uh, whether it's, uh, so with ShareFile, you have choice of where you store your files. So no matter if those files are stored on premises, managed by yourselves, managed by a trusted partner, if they're stored in the cloud, 
uh, all those things uh, are choices. You can mix and match uh, what, what, whatever you like, where to store your files. Uh, it's all possible. And we include the possibility of when you're sharing a file, you can also use a thing called dynamic watermarking to protect against taking screenshots. So uh, that all helps in uh, data sovereignty as well. So uh, whenever a file is transferred, uh, so it should also be subject to the appropriate safeguards, which is mentioned in Article 46 of the GDPR. Uh, now, especially when sharing files uh, within, but also without, uh, external to the EU, uh, those uh, security measures should be there, and they are there with within all the uh, within the various editions of share file. This is uh, key and basic to uh, a share file license. So. Um, yeah, these are just some of the examples, but the, the main examples, I, I, I would say that um, ShareFall can help you become more GDPR compliant, right? Now, uh, a lot, I, I think one of the questions that I get asked the most uh, is um, uh, whether or not ShareFall is GDPR certified uh, or if a customer is using a share file, uh, whether a customer is GDPR certified or not. Now, there is no such thing as a GDPR certification. Now, there are several certifications that help prove that you do all the, that you need to do uh, to become uh, uh, compliant with GDPR, but there's no single certification to match that. Now, there are a few initiatives and some important uh, uh, certifications and, and clauses that we adhere to. Uh, of course, we as a company uh, uh, work in a GDPR compliant way uh, and we uh, uh, strive to be GDPR compliant ourselves, of course. And this is a reason that many, many customers especially customers that are focused on things like security and compliance choose share file um, but it still all depends on uh, how you use it and uh, and uh, the ways you use it now uh, we uh, do have the uh, uh, privacy shield framework certification we're part of that which is um, a collaboration between the eu and the us which actually recently got elevated um, uh, to another level. Uh, there's uh, a very active lawyer uh, called Max Schrems from the from Altria uh, that is very active in the GDPR field. Uh, uh, there were some court decisions uh, that uh, I would say raised the level of GDPR itself, um, and uh, this is also why the Privacy Shield also raised their standards again. So we are, of course, still compliant with that. Um, this is something very core to what we do. Uh, now, there are uh, other things like the, the trustee cert uh, uh, certification as well, which we comply with. If there are any other questions uh, about that, please don't hesitate to contact us about this because we are more than happy uh, to share uh, either with or without an NDA, so whatever we can to um, to tell you more about the the way we protect the data and uh, and what we can do to uh, enable you as a customer uh, to be uh, more compliant with GDPR. Now, having said that, um, I'll gladly hand over to uh, Emmett and Matt, uh, who will tell you more about um, the ways that we actually uh, come, achieve all this and the ways ShareFile can help you. Thank you, Stefan, for um, your overview on GDPR and how ShareFile can um, assist organizations to achieve this uh, regulation. Um, I wanted to um, now shift um, the focus a little bit and um, look more at um, some of the capabilities that, that ShareFile has that um, allow this to, um, or allow us to assist these organizations um, or assist organizations with this. Okay, so 
Um, Sharefile is very much built with um, security at mind, whether that be through from the data access and the control, um, so the permissions that are applied, and whether that be through uh, the encryption, the levels of encryption that are built in, whether that be at uh, in, in transit or at rest, um, the reporting and auditing. So every action on that takes place on the system is audited and um, can be reported upon. And then as Stefan has already mentioned, the, the, the regulatory compliance that, that um, Sharefile can assist with. Thinking of um, threat detection, and this is a feature that, um, or capability that Sharefile introduced um, fairly recently, and that allows um, organizations to receive um, notifications on abnormal behavior that takes place uh, within their environment. Um, so such behaviors as um, logging in from um, unusual locations, um, maybe that uh, upload abnormalities of data, um, the, the, the activity is analyzed, and we can then find that activity using AI um, models, and we can take action upon those. So for example, we can disable users access, um, we can disable um, or ask users to reset their um, two-factor authentication, and we can also um, reset their password as well. Okay, The alerts can be sent out at a number of levels, and I'll come on to that shortly as we go through the demonstration, um, and can be reported upon. Okay, So here I have a, um, an administrative account. Okay, I can view the settings around this. So under security settings, we have a, a capability around security alerts. Um, so these are the notifications that can be can be set up based on different criteria. Um, you can determine who you want to be notified, um, okay, on what and about what activity, and you can also add further contacts. So, for example, you may want to. Um, notify your security team or you may want to make use of a scene um, application to um, take note of all the the alerts that, that might happen okay once the notification has been sent out um, these the action can be taken um, directly from the notification so i have an alert here okay so this is an alert that would have been sent out to um, a, a user Okay, and they can come in here straight away and change the password. Okay. As an administrator, um, they can come in and review the user's activity. So I've got information here about the user, what um, the reason why they're getting it in this case, because a user signed in from an un unusual device and location. Okay. And they can click on this and take take activity on, on that. Okay, so if we um, were, were to go in as the administrator, we can take a look at the, the user in question, who is um, a user called Ted Baker, we can see here, and we can take a look at the, the alerts that have been received for that user. Okay, and we can do a number of other things from within here. So for example, we can um, log that user out of the system, we can reset their two-step for verification, their password, um, we can remove their access to all the folders, Okay. And we can also disable their access as well. Okay. We can uh, also take a look at all the activity that that user has, has uh, taken or has taken place by that user on the system with, so within a certain period of time. So here we can say, okay, what what's that user been doing for the last seven days, for example? And we can actually go into into here and look at the the files and see that in this instance, this this uh, PDF document was downloaded and the location was Amsterdam. Um, here we've got in this folder a, a slightly more activity. So there's been downloads, uploads, um, and different locations here. So one in, in the UK and one in or two in the, the, the Netherlands. Okay. 
once you um want to, want to understand more maybe you want to take some more time out but you don't want the user to access the system so we can disable their access okay so here i have um, the user logged in so this is my user ted baker they can log in here they can undertake um, different actions so for example here we can look at this test document everything is um, is working sufficiently as the administrator I can disable their access. Okay, so here I'm disabling their access. They're no longer able to undertake anything. And um, here we can see that the account has been grayed out. Okay, but if I if I'm the end user, um, I'm if maybe I'm working away and suddenly this this account has been disabled. Literally, I am unable to undertake any action on that account. So in real time, the administrator has disabled the access to that user. Okay. We can also then come back as the, um, the administrator. Maybe the investigation has taken place. Um, the administrator is happy that the user can continue to, to operate within the, the, the solution. And um, so we can straight away enable that user and come back as the, um, the user here and, and straight away, the user is able to access the, the data that, that they have access to, to see under the controls that have been set um, within the solution. Okay, so um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the in the chat. Um, but um, I will now pass over to Emmett, who will cover um, the sharing capabilities and options around this, and also the reporting um, within within ShareFile as well. Hey everybody, so I'm Emmett Murphy. I'm one of the sales engineers and customer success engineers here within the EMEA ShareFile team. Um, and as Matt alluded to and Stefan alluded to, I'm going to go through some of the, the new Sharefile uh, security settings um, and then also some of the old and existing Sharefile security settings and then some reporting as well. So uh, strap in, there's a little bit to go through, um, so I'll get started straight away. First of all, going into the new uh, security settings. So what we've done is we've changed the default permissions for share and request settings um, within the SharePoint account. So if you go into your uh, admin settings, advanced preferences, file settings, there's these two new options here, share settings and then request settings. And there's both the same options, so I'll just keep it up here for the moment. So within that, we have anyone, anyone public must enter the name and email address, client and employee users must sign in, and employees users must sign in. So at the, at the moment, I have only these ticked. And this is what changed in regards to the default permissions and what changed within the default settings. Previously, we had anyone in public must enter the name and email address. Um, and that was the default permission as well. So these were all selected and default permission. We found there to be potential security vulnerabilities with these public links. So we changed everybody's accounts to these client and employee users must sign in in order to access share and request links. What that means is if I have these two uh, items selected, the user was to go and share a document. If I go in here to my demo folder, click share, uh, create another link. If I'm in download or view, I only have these two options for client and employees. Users must sign in in order to actually access that link. And it always defaults to a client and employee user. Now, if I, if needs be, so if there's permissions in the company, that allow those users to change those, permit those permissions to uh, public must enter the name and email address or anonymous, there is no access or the no permissions um, on the account or no need for any permissions. You'll be able to select those, go into the folder, and be able to actually send that doc. So if I was just to go in here, share it, Create another link. You can see now I have all these four options. Anyone, anyone public must enter the name and email address, find employers and employee users. Again, with these two, um, you won't get an audit or repo reporting trail on the public, on the public who has access to that link. You will with this option, but at that stage, it's a trust system with those with that end user or that recipient. They have to put in their correct name and the correct email address. Um, but they could also put in John Doe or John Doe at acme.com 
whatever you want to use. Um, so that reporting may not be as accurate as you'd want. And that's why we defaulted all those permissions to client employees and employee users, which can be averted back if needs be. With the new security alerts, um, our new permissions that we have set within the file settings and the share settings, uh, we do have the option, we do have all the previously existing security settings within, within ShareFile. So we have the likes of a DLP that you can integrate. We have the password requirements that you can change to suit the company yourself and when they expire. Login and security passwords. You have trusted domains. You have 2FA for employee users and for client users. The auto lock configuration that Matt showed um, in his demo in terms of the um, security alerts when a user fails to log in a certain amount of times, you can set that within here. We have IP restrictions, we have re-authentications, and then we have single, uh, single sign-on and SAML configurations as well. So I have mine configured to my Azure Active Directory, but this can be to uh, a majority of the SAML 2.0 identity providers. And you can require single sign-on for all end users. Um, and if that is enabled, all end users will have to use the single sign-on that you have uh, configured within the account, but any admins will still be able to log in through their username and password. And um, so a kind of a fail, a fail safe, so to, so to speak, if anything goes wrong with your single sign-on, you can still get into the account and you can turn it off. With that, we have also the configured device security. So you can see here, I have the standard enabled on the account, um, but you can put in increased um, security permissions based on it. Um, so online only, and um, that you have to be online in order to access it. It requires a pin lock uh, is disabled, offline access is disabled, external applications are disabled, or you can have a customizability of being able to automatically remove accounts, um, enable offline access or enable it or disable it, uh, enable an automatic logon or disable it, and then restrict modified devices. So any kind of jailbroken devices and stuff like that, you'd be able to enable or disable um, ShareFile being able to work on those devices. And then we have the super user and the quarantine files within the account. As Matt alluded to, we also do have the reporting tool within ShareFile. And this reporting tool covers a whole, whole list of different areas. So if I was here to create a report, I can choose either from usage, uh, which goes over numerous different activities on the account, uh, the access of the account for users of folders, any changes within that account as well. So if somebody was to add certain permissions or remove permissions from the people options within a share folder, you'll get a report based on that, what permissions were given to who and from who. And then there's a whole heap, whole lieu of, of different options here within share and request, messaging, bandwidth summary, but if I was going to usage report here, I see I have a custom, a few custom options in terms of range of when I want that reporting. I can base it on the entire account or individual users if I want. And then a, a list of different activities. So you can select or deselect these options if you want. For this, I just don't, I don't want any DLP options um, and I just want the rest of the documents in here. And then I can either select this as a recurring report or an ad hoc report as well. So if I was to select it as a current report and select next, it'll ask me, do I want to run that daily, weekly, or monthly? And I can save it into a specific folder. If I was to select weekly and just add it to my personal folders, um, I can select what day of the week I want it to run. So I'm going to say it's going to run on a Friday. And with that, I can have an upload alert to that specific folder. So when this document gets uploaded to my account, I'll get a notification that it's uploaded and I'll be able to see the relevant information based on the usage of the account as well. All these reporting you can do, as I said, ad hoc or recurring reports, and you have multiple different layers of information that can be pulled. This can be then pushed into um, different integrations. Once it's in a folder, you can push it out and export it out uh, and import it in different applications that you can use to measure that data as well. So myself, Matt, and Stefan will be still on the call if you want to go through some um, questions and answers. If you have anything to ask, don't hesitate. Uh, and myself and Stefan and Matt will be happy to answer. Thank you. So at the moment, we don't see any questions yet. Um, I do want to remind you that if you do have questions, you can enter them in the Q&A field. Um, if we don't get any questions right now, you can still reach us, of course.
I see Marie had a question about sharing this with colleagues. Uh, yes, you sure can. Uh, we will be sending out a link to the recording and you can share that recording with anyone you like. And that seems to be all, all the questions we have. Thank you for all the great comments and uh, be sure and uh, follow us on the usual channels uh, for any updates. And we will be doing more webinars in the future, of course. Um, so hope to see you there. Thanks for joining today and have a good day.